Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new skin gen feature for Character Creator 3. So I'm just going to basically talk about where everything is. If you're a newbie to uh, skin gen, this is the tutorial for you. We're going to talk about uh, where you can find all the skin gen assets, as well as uh, going to talk briefly about layers and some of the uh, functionality of layers as well. Okay, so uh, basically uh, if you're wondering where all your skin gen content is, there's a couple of sections here in the content manager. The first one is for skin, which I've clicked on right now. And under skin, we have various subcategories, uh, overall, uh, full skin. You can see them uh, highlighted right here, skin base. And we go down the, uh, the list here all the way down to like skin details and blemishes. And we can, you know, twirl up, twirl open blemishes there. We see uh, in blemish, we see freckles and moles and acne and stuff like that. Let's apply some freckles uh, to our character. If we go to the realistic human, uh, realistic human skin pack, that is a purchase pack from the content store. We have a variety of additional stuff here. I'm going to just apply this face freckle three heavy to my character. If we double click it, it'll just apply it to my character and you'll see some uh, freckles appear on her face. And you get the option to add or replace a layer. We'll just uh, go ahead and add these uh, freckles on. And there you see our character has some additional freckles. And this also opens up the skin gen panel, uh, otherwise known previously as the appearance editor here. And you can see we have this new freckles panel right here. We can make it visible or invisible. Those are the freckles that we just added on. Okay, and there's other stuff like acne and, and suntan, and if you purchase the Realistic Human Skin Pack, um, there's additional stuff available for you in here as well. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. All right, but we can go down to like, you know, stuff like uh, acquired, which are all the tattoos. If you go in here, there's like stuff like dirt and uh, various scars and uh, tattoos. And again, Realistic Human, Realistic Human Skin Pack, there's a bunch of other stuff as well that you can add on there. Uh, and the makeup is all found in the next section here under makeup. You can see up at the, at the top, we have some various subcategories for makeup too. Full makeup, uh, foundation makeup, eye makeup, they all correspond to the respective folders down here. You can go through this way or you can go down here as well. If you go to like lip makeup, for example, we click on that folder. Let's just throw in some of this uh, acid purple makeup, for example, here. And there you go with this funky uh, purple uh, makeup color on our character's face now. And we can even throw in another layer. You can see over here in the uh, skin section, we have all the skin stuff, um, all the skin layers for our character. And under here, we have all the makeup layers for our character as well. Okay, and you can see we have right now the lips and the, and the eyebrows. We can take the lips off. We'll talk more about this a little bit later on. And I can add this uh, cordial as well. We can add it on top of that uh, acid purple color just to get a kind of interesting combination there. And we'll talk about combining these all together uh, in a little bit here. Now, in order to understand your character's structure, it's very important that you understand what a material is. So over here in the uh, uh, skin gen tab here, you can see that we have the material set to head. And there's also various other materials on the, on the character as well, the head and the body material. And you'll see that each material will have its own uh, set of layers here. So if we switch from head over to body, we will see the body has some, uh, you know, different... Uh, um, layers on there as well, navel capillaries and all that stuff. We can go over here to uh, arm as well, and the arm just has one single elbow decal just for the uh, wrinkles on the elbow there, uh, and also for the leg. Uh, there's a couple of uh, noise uh, layers there on the leg, and finally we also have the nails as well. Here's a little diagram to show you which uh, materials uh, correspond with which areas of the body. Uh, just to keep that in mind, uh, you can apply different materials to each section of the body as outlined here in this diagram. So the skin and the makeup sections in your content manager correspond with these two sections in the uh, modify panel as well. These uh, in, the, in the skin gen editor here, the skin section and the makeup section. And you can find all the uh, corresponding uh, layers that you can apply in the respective sections of the content manager. And in the skin gen panel, you obviously have the skin section, the makeup section, as well as the outfit section. Right below that, you have all of your layer settings. Um, we're going to talk about materials in just a moment here, uh, as well as texture resolution and all that stuff. And below that, you have your layers, your list of layers, and your control list, uh, all the parameters that you can adjust for those respective layers. Now let's take a quick look at texture and blend mode. Uh, right now we currently have the head material selected and the texture is at 2048 by 2048. You can see if I zoom in really close, we get some really nice details on the, on the cheeks, a little discoloration under the eye, and then you can see the pores and everything. And if we pan down to the uh, the uh, chest as well, you can see just, you know, slight moles and, and you know, uh, kind of subtle veins all along the chest there. So, uh, you know, very detailed at 2048 by 2048. However, sometimes for the sake of speed, you may want to change the texture resolution to something lower. 
So if I select the head, I currently have the head selected. Right now they're all 2048 by 2048. If I change the head to uh, say 256 by 256, um, what's, what's going to happen is it's going to drastically reduce the uh, resolution of the head there. And you can see it's, you know, really, really um, bland, basically. There's no details on it. However, if we go down to the uh, chest, you can see the chest resolution uh, is still the same. All right. Now, if you want to update um, every material on the body at once, what you can do is you can just go over here and select update. Okay. And what that's going to do is that's going to update every single material on the body to 256 by 256. And you can see now all those uh, details are gone from the chest there. It just looks like uh, really bland. Okay, and uh, there you go. Now, if I change the uh, head, let's change the head back to, or let's go to the body, uh, just to make sure and check that it's uh, 20, 256 by 256. You can see there it is. Okay, and the arm as well, 256, 256. Uh, whoops, and uh, leg and uh, nails. So you can see when I select update, they all update. Now, if I, for example, went to the body and I was doing some editing on the body and I figured that, uh, you know, I'm done the editing, I can take it back to uh, uh, 2048. So I'm going to ch change my texture size to 2048 only on the body. Okay. That'll just take a second to process. And you can see the uh, 2048 by 2048 texture is restored onto the body. Uh, very nice and uh, detailed there. However, however, if we pop up to the uh, face, you can see the face is uh, still... Uh, the head rather is still uh, very bland and uh, blurry. Uh, now if we change, we don't have to go to update. If I change from the body material up to the head material, as soon as you exit the material that you're working on, say for example I change from body to head, what's going to happen is now it's going to update all of those textures to 2048 by 2048, which is the texture that uh, texture resolution that I was just working on. Okay, so you can see that the uh, head resolution changes back to normal, and now everything from the head to the body to the arms, they are all back at 2048. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can update all the textures from here. However, if you also change materials, it's going to update them all to the same texture resolution as the material you were just working on. All right, so let's go back to the head here. And let's take a quick look at the uh, blend mode. All right, so to uh, demonstrate the blend mode, I'm going to apply a quick uh, lip makeup uh, layer here to my character. Let's just go for the... Uh, I don't know, the cordial here, a nice uh, plump uh, red, nice juicy red color. And that will automatically bring my skin gen tool over to the makeup section here. And you can see we have the uh, lip uh, layer that I just applied there, as well as the uh, eyebrows. We can make uh, both of them visible or invisible, just like that. Okay, no eyebrows is pretty freaky. Um, but if you, you can see when I select the uh, lip layer here, now we have the option for blend mode. And there's four different blend modes, uh, normal, multiply, overlay, and light. These are the same as your uh, uh, blend modes in Photoshop, basically. Uh, if I select normal, what's going to happen is normal is basically opaque. It's going to completely cover the uh, previous layer, so there's uh, nothing showing through. Uh, if we change this from normal to multiply, you can see multiply basically multiplies the luminosity of the base color uh, by the blend color. So you get a darker, more enhanced uh, look uh, on your blend. Uh, if we change that to overlay, Overlay basically combines uh, the multiply and screen blend modes. Um, if your base color is light, it's going to make it lighter on the top. If your base color is dark, it's going to make it darker, uh, just like that. Uh, and if we change from uh, overlay to soft light, you can see it kind of just softens everything. It can darken or lighten certain colors depending on the blend color. Uh, basically, it's like shining a diffuse spotlight on your image. And you can see this image here has explanations for each individual uh, blend mode. You can kind of read them here and get more familiar with them that way. All right, now right below the uh, layer settings section here that we just talked about, we have a couple of other options here. This one is for show and hide. If we uh, open up this option here, we can show all layers. We can show um, the current uh, for, on the current material or for all materials, okay? We can hide all layers on the current material or all materials. So if, for example, if I hide all layers on, on the uh, current material, it's gonna hide all the layers on the face. So all of these um, uh, ones here have been hidden. And if we uh, show all layers on the current material, you can see that it looks a lot more natural. We have those, you know, uh, freckle adjustments and everything uh, added on there. And of course, you can do the same thing for uh, hide all layers on all materials and uh, show all layers on all materials as well. Now that'll be for the head, body, arm, and so on and so forth. Keep that in mind. You can also hide individual layers by uh, clicking on the little eye icon here as well. So there's the uh, other freckles here. You can see it's very slight, a very slight effect. Um, we can take get rid of all this, uh, get rid of them one by one so you can see what each one does here. The hemoglobin gives a little bit of rosiness, capillaries on the cheeks there. The uh, kind of the pores are a little bit harder to notice unless you zoom in, but uh, the secondary ones are fairly noticeable. And again, you can click on these one by one on the eye icon there, make them visible or invisible. 
You can also right click on the icon here and just go to uh, show all layers on current material, all materials, hide all layers. So same thing, uh, wherever you click, right click, you can select and show and hide all layers on the current material um, or on all materials there as well, uh, show and hide them. But let's go over to the makeup section here really quickly and take a look at our character's eyebrow layer. Now with eyebrow, uh, as with all layers, you can actually duplicate them as well. Once you click on them, the duplicate icon here becomes available. And if we click on that, it's just going to basically duplicate that eyebrow layer. And you can see now we have two eyebrow layers. If we make one invisible, you can see it basically just kind of thickens them a little bit, almost makes them a little bit darker. And if we take this eyebrow copy, we can adjust this by, uh, you know, maybe changing the opacity. We can increase the opacity. You can see the results up there. Um, this is the overall opacity. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. We can also go down here and do something like adjust the colors. So if I take my color under material here, I take the color and make it a little bit darker. You can see we can uh, increase or decrease the surrounding color there. Let's maybe just take this uh, color swatch and choose that, so maybe something a little bit darker there. So maybe something a little bit more like that. And if we press okay, you can see it just uh, adds a little bit more, uh, you know, thickness to those to those eyebrows because the background is darker. So, you know, if you want thicker, more, uh, you know, interesting eyebrows, uh, you know, uh, you can just uh, adjust the color here. You can adjust the hue and the brightness and of course the uh, various other material parameters as well. Now let's go back to the skin section here and let's take a look at our freckles. Now if I select the freckles here, um, beside the duplicate, we have an option here for a uh, mask. We'll talk about that in a separate tutorial, but uh, beside that we have this one here, which is uh, has a number of different options for flatten, make static and merge visible, merge down. We'll talk about these one by one here. So if I flatten the selected layer, um, what's going to happen here? It's going to flatten this freckles zero. Okay, it's only going to flatten this freckles uh, with the zero in parentheses there. It's not going to flatten any of the other layers in my material. I can flatten the entire material and all materials as well, but I'm only going to flatten the selected layer in this case. And you'll see that all these parameters, I will just keep the 2048 texture size, press OK. And you'll see all these parameters will disappear. And we'll have only the option to adjust a few different uh, texture maps here, including the base color map. Now, if you can see my base color map is like this currently, if I want, I can just double click on that swatch there and replace it. We're going to use this image right here. I'll just double click that and replace it. You can see now our freckles have been replaced with, you know, almost like blotchy um, uh, kind of skin disease kind of freckles there. Um, so that's what we've done there. Um, now, when, once you flattened your layer, that's the only thing you can adjust. You can only adjust these, uh, these maps right here. So if I wanted to adjust the normal map, I can just do that as well and uh, the other maps, roughness and whatnot, I can adjust these. However, I only have one for the base color map in this case. And I'm gonna control Z that. We're gonna get rid of this uh, skin issue uh, just by control Zing it. If only, you, if only you could do that in real life. But that's basically what flattening a layer does. And flattening a layer will actually see, help to save resources when you're loading up your, uh, when you're adjusting your layer, when you're loading up that section of your uh, skin gen editor. I'm just gonna control Z, Z this again here. And this will take it back to the original layer with the various different parameters, which you can see here. A lot more stuff we can adjust, all right? Now next we're gonna talk about options for making your uh, layers static, uh, flattening your layers, as well as merging your layers. Now on this image here, you can see a number of different options uh, that you can use to activate your editor a lot faster by saving resources. And these are make static, uh, flatten, and merge, and we'll talk about these as we move along. Um, making static basically temporarily sets the layers into static mode, and we're not going to be able to edit that. Uh, you have to make them dynamic again. We'll talk about that. Uh, flattening them, basically just kind of flatten everything. You bake all the image layers. Um, this greatly increases the speed uh, when you're you know, um, switching modes in skin gen. And merging basically merges all the layers into a single texture. And we'll go through that as well in just a moment here. Okay, so let's talk about the make static option first, okay? So we can select uh, any, any of the uh, layers here. It doesn't really matter. Let's go over here and under flatten and select make static. Now we can choose make static for the selected layer, uh, the current material, and all materials as well. So if I wanted to uh, make static the uh, current material, for example, that'll make all the layers static. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select current material, and change it to 2048 by 2048. That's fine. And what'll happen here is you'll see the kind of the images for each layer have gone gray. There's a little gray uh, border on, this, on the left side here as opposed to green. And if we select them all, the only option we have here is to edit the layer mask, okay? We, we don't have the option to edit anything else. So base color, if we double click on that, normal, nothing, okay? Uh, freckle, hemoglobin, all these layers, uh, same thing. I can double click on the mask though and we can adjust the mask if we want. 
but I'm not going to do that in this case. All right, you can make each individual layer uh, dynamic by clicking on Make Dynamic here. Okay, so for this freckle one, you'll see it returns, returns to the uh, green border on the left there, and all the others remain gray. If you want to make them all dynamic, let's just go to Make Dynamic and select Current Material. Okay, and now you can see they, ret they all return to the green border on the side, and we can modify all the various parameters down there. So let's talk about merging next. Okay, so merging again saves resources. Uh, you can merge visible. I can merge the current material or all materials again. I'm just gonna go ahead and merge the current material. Let's take a look what that does. If we press OK, notice that it basically merges everything into a single skin base. And if we select that skin base, we can see our base color map right here. Now this image will show you a before and after of your uh, base color maps once you merge. You can see the after base color map merges that freckle layer onto my character's face. Okay, so just be aware that any other layers you add once you merge, those layers are also going to be baked into your base color map. I'm going to control Z that really quickly. And you can see all the uh, layers return to, uh, to normal here. Now uh, one uh, special thing about merges, there's an option for merge visible as well. So for example, if I make these uh, for this zero freckle here invisible, and I go over here to my merge, and now if I select merge, merge visible for the current material, I won't have the freckles on that base color map. However, if I select merge down, and I select merge current material, let's go ahead and press OK. If we go to our skin base here, you'll see that those freckles will no longer appear in our base color map. All right, so I'm gonna press Control Z and quickly undo that. Whereas if I have this visible, and I right click, and uh, you can also merge it down from here as well. So I'll merge down, and we'll go to uh, current material. 2048 is okay. If we go to our skin base, now you can see in the base color map, it will have those freckles. And also the freckles will remain on our character's face. So just keep that in mind when you're merging and you merge down, um, anything that you have invisible will not be merged into the final into the final merge, I guess you can call it. All right now, in addition to uh, you know merging all the layers and everything like that, you can actually click and drag these uh, various effects on top of each other. So all you need to do in this case is just like say for example, we click on the capillary cheek, we can click and drag this layer just like this to the very top. And again, with this particular situation, it's not going to make much of a difference. I can take the freckles and I can click and drag them all the way down to uh, below everything. And again, because we're not really layering too much on top of each other, it's not going to make much of an effect. But that's more more for like a makeup effect. If you have makeup that's on you know one layer on top of the other, uh, you can blend them and, and basically kind of click and drag them and move them on one on top of the other uh, for various different effects. All right, now in this section, we're going to talk about material linking. So you can actually apply material effects that affect uh, multiple materials at the same time. And that's what we're going to do right here. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, skin uh, blemish under uh, Suntan Realistic Human Skin Pack. I'm going to apply this sunburn cloud to my character. We're going to give him an Insta Tan. And you can see here that the poor guy forgot his uh, suntan lotion and got a little red on the uh, chest and the arm area. Now currently we're on the uh, body material. You can see we have the uh, sun, uh, sunburn uh, noise and uh, sunburn full body uh, layers here. And the sunburn noise has all the effects and stuff uh, for the noise. If we go over here to the arm, we have the same uh, layers on the arm as well. Sunburn noise and uh, full body here. Okay, And all the same uh, parameters uh, and so on and so forth. Now, if I go back uh, to the body here, for example, uh, notice at the top, we have this section here that says uh, link controls. Okay, uh, link control currently it's activated. We can deactivate it just by clicking it just like this. Okay, uh, however, right now it's active. Uh, if I go down to, uh, let's say the colors and I just see the secondary color of my uh, sunburn here, let's change it to something a little bit uh, darker. What's gonna happen is if I go down here, maybe to uh, like uh, not too dark, but maybe, don't want to burn the poor guy more than he is. Let's we'll go ahead and select that color. You can see that the chest will update there. Okay. However, the arm isn't updated, even though link controls is on. Uh, in order to make the arm uh, correspond with the uh, chest, I need to go over here to update under texture. Okay. So once I select update, then the arm is also going to update with that uh, new uh, change that I just made there. Okay. You can see it's a lot darker there on the arms. Uh, if I want, I can just go back and make it uh, a nice lighter color because that seems a little bit too uh, too dark. Uh, just press OK. It's going to update on the chest again, not on the arms. So I need to go up here to update. And that'll update the arm as well. Now, if I deselect link controls, and uh, currently I have body selected, and I change my secondary color to, let's say, like a nice uh, toasty uh, red here, for example, and I press OK, it's going to automatically update the chest. Uh, it's not going to do anything with the arm. It's only going to update the chest. Uh, you can see right there, I can change it back to, uh, you know, a nice uh, more tan color like I had before. 
and it's only going to affect the chest and not the arms. However, if I select link controls and then I, uh, you know, adjust it to, um, you know, a nice um, toasty red again, just like this, and then I uh, press OK. Again, it's going to update on the chest and I need to go back to update to uh, transfer that effect to the arm. And so you'll see the arm get a slight uh, tinge uh, redder there. Okay, just like the chest almost looks like a blotchy kind of skin condition there. So that's link controls. Basically, if you want the uh, the modifications to affect uh, both uh, both materials, what you need to do is you need to have link controls active, and then you need to adjust, make your adjustments here, and then uh, go to update. Okay. If you don't have link controls active when you when you up, do your update, it's not going to update to both materials. Now, uh, there's certain things like opacity up here. This is overall opacity um, for this effect. So if I select uh, sunburn noise, uh, this is not going to matter. It's not going to matter if it's linked or not. So if I go uh, deselect link, for example, and I adjust the opacity, that's going to affect uh, both materials, the arm and the chest, regardless of whether or not I have it linked. Okay, so just uh, be aware of that. Uh, in addition, things like uh, sunburn noise, if I just enable the visibility, even though I'm on the body material, it's going to affect uh, both materials. And if I go over to the arm, for example, and do the same thing with the sunburn noise layer, it's going to affect uh, both materials there. All right, so just be aware of the linkage on uh, those two, the uh, visibility and the opacity up here. All right, and opacity, same thing for the arm uh, as well. All right, so that's really all I wanted to show you in this uh, UI tutorial. Uh, thanks so much for watching, and make sure you check out our forums, as always, at forum.reillusion.com. And we have a lot of other, tons of other uh, skin gen tutorials you can check out as well. And I hope to see you in the next video.